Welcome back to episode 11 of Breaking Barriers. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, media officer, broadcast assistant and author Beth Pritchard. Hi Beth, how are you? I am good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. So first of all, would you like to just tell us a bit about yourself and about your career? Yeah, so actually, um, yeah, I'm a sports journalist. Um, I've been working for Lincoln City Women for, I mean, this is my third season. um, And I just, that was a, I started volunteering while I was at uni. um, And I just really love it. So I've kept going after uni. And then um, I also work as part of the sports team at BBC Radio Lincolnshire, which is my local radio station. And then when I'm not doing either of those, uh, I write, um, well, currently books. Fab. So you studied journalism at university, is that right? I did, yeah. Um, I graduated uh, last April. Um, So I was just curious, did you always know you wanted to go into sports journalism? No, I had absolutely no intention of going into sports journalism. I think, I mean, I originally wanted to be a photographer and I did a first year of a lens-based media degree before going, I want to be a journalist. (laughs) So I was actually 19 when I decided I wanted to go into journalism. And then it wasn't until the summer of first year when the opportunity with Lincoln City Women, then Nettleham Ladies, came up that I thought, oh, I could do that for a year and just get a bit of experience and then absolutely fell in love with it. So <laughs> decided, I, I originally, I wanted to be the next Louis Theroux to begin with, um, but then I've I've diverted now and yeah, I can't imagine not being in sports journalism really. So as you've mentioned, you're, part, you're the media officer for Lincoln City Women. So your job is heavily evolved around social media. Um, we know that sports journalists do get a lot of abuse and a lot of hate online. Have you have you had to deal with that yourself? Or, um, thankfully, on so on the Lincoln City Women's social media accounts, we've never had anything mean. We've got such great fans. Everyone is lovely. Even after a rubbish game, you're never going to get any hate because they're just it's just so dedicated. I personally have had a few hateful comments on my own tweets, but only when I've sort of been really outspoken about, you know, saying things like, oh, some men can't tolerate women being in sports, can they? So I've had a few, yeah, quite hateful things personally directed at me, but not as the media officer of the team, just as someone who's being outspoken, really. And how do you deal with those negative comments? Because as a student sports journalist, I know sometimes there are a few that I even get myself. So how do you personally deal with that? Do you not read it or do you respond? No, I, I read them. I don't generally respond. I do read them because to be fair, I I know that, you know, there's some dinosaurs out there and I just <laughs> have a bit of a laugh about the fact that these people exist that believe these things. So it doesn't really bother me that much. I, I'm sort of like, well they're idiots for thinking that so I I read them I have a bit of a laugh if it's really bad I'll like report their tweet or something um but then just move on and I I kind of it it doesn't really feel that bad because there for every one person that says something horrible there are 10 people that are like oh yeah that's a really good point and uh oh yeah that's something that we should really be talking about more or things like that so yeah it's it's really doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, I think everybody gets the odd one or two, no matter what their opinion is. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to get used to it and move on. <laughs> yeah. So have you had to overcome any other challenges within the industry? Not massively, no. I thought I was going to sort of experience a lot more hardships than I actually have. So obviously working with a women's team, you, you know, mostly surrounded by women anyway, Um, so obviously they're all really supportive but then there are a few you know there are men on the board but they I I joined the team when there was no media presence so they can just appreciate that this is a lot of stuff I've done and they can appreciate that I'm good at my job because I've done all of this yeah so on that front there's never been any sort of hurdles to jump over that's just being I, I walked into a job and I've got on with it and people appreciate that I've got on with it there has been 
one person that I can think of, just the one that's actually sort of acted in a sexist way against me for being a female sports journalist, just the one. And I think that that's actually pretty impressive. And this is a man that's in his 60s and just sort of saw me as the person on the media team that should be uh, making him a coffee and has referred to women's football as girls football and said who would want to watch girls football so it is um mostly everyone is very supportive and um I, I work with mostly men at Radio Lincolnshire and they just treat me as if I was one of them and there's absolutely no bias really which I, I um hate to say that I was surprised about was, from what you yeah. see on social media you expect that you are going to be a a target of some form of you know bias in the workplace but it's actually not been that bad so um, my next question was going to be do you feel as though you have to work harder because you are a female like do you have to do you feel like you've got a point to prove I think maybe but I think that might just be a a personal thing anyway I think that maybe even if I was male I'd be working hard because I'd want to be the best anyway so I think that it might just be because I'm a woman that I think oh I I need to get this done perfectly or you know I'll go above and beyond or I'll sort that thing out and then say oh by the way I've done this for you um that might be because I'm a woman but I I don't I can't categorically say that is because I'm female because I might be like that if I was male so yeah but I definitely, I put a lot of pressure on myself to get everything done and to get everything done perfectly, that's for sure. Do you think self-pressure is a good thing? Because I know I put a lot of pressure on myself and sometimes I feel like it is a lot, but would you say it's a good thing? I think, uh, yeah, there are pros and cons. I, (laughs) I am such a perfectionist. There are days when, so I'll be working like an evening shift at work and I know I'll be finishing at 10 p.m., but then I'll get up at eight and I'll sit and I'll do my work at my desk until, you know, an hour before I actually have to go and do my paid job. And I, I, I see that as a, right, you've got this time, you're going to be working in this time, you're going to get this done. And I think, would it be better if I gave myself more time off? Probably. <laughs> but will I deal with the consequences of being exhausted and anxious later on instead? Yes. <laughs> Um, so do you have any tips or advice for anyone who's looking to get into the industry whether they're in university like myself or whether they work in to get their foot in the door yeah absolutely so I know it's hard now because you know a lot of the well women's national league and below and then uh, the men's national league etc are all sort of on hold so it's harder to get your foot in the door with a club so but um what yeah what I did basically was just send an email say I'm interested in getting involved um a few days later I went down to a Lincoln City Women training session had a chat with some of the staff and just immediately jumped on board and then um that then so about a year after that I was approached by Radio Lincolnshire saying we've got an opening do you want this job um do you want to come in and have an interview uh I also some I shared some of my work on Instagram and um someone who is a Lincoln City fan so followed me but also works for the FA saw it and sent me a message saying the FA have got this young reporters club um do you want me to put your name forward so then I, I wrote for the FA for a season so it's the first step is to like find a club that has little or no media presence and send them a message and say can I help because you're not going to get paid for your first job um and yeah but that's that's the easy way in and all small clubs are going to jump at the chance to have someone volunteer to do their media work I'm sure um and I know that most people that I've seen uh graduate at a similar time as me they've all either a non-league men's team or a women's team done some volunteer work and have written their match reports or match previews or press releases or whatever and have that in their portfolio before they've left uni and then the second um bit of advice would just be to share your work as much as possible um because if I hadn't put that post on Instagram I wouldn't have got to write for the FA so literally just putting work on every single social media platform and having a good portfolio a good website 
I know um, I put a lot of effort into building my my personal website and it, we did have to do it for a uni assignment as well. Yeah. We did, that was um, some of the credits we needed to graduate. We did have to do that, but I just put so much effort into it that after I'd finished uni, uh, one of the lecturers emailed me and said, do you mind if we use yours as an example for the current third years? And I think that that sort of, if people visited my website, I, I do look yeah. like a professional. So I think that definitely has been beneficial for me as well. One of the things I'm currently doing in university at the moment is creating this brand for yourself. How important is um, your reputation online? I think quite important. I mean, um, um, personally, it's very much um, sort of a Lincolnshire based for me. So um, the like the non-league team managers, I follow them, they follow me on Twitter, that sort of thing. So for me, getting to know people and having, you know, I've got the, the same profile picture across my website and my Twitter, um, having that, like, so when someone visits your website, they know it's the same person, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that is that is quite important. And I do think that that sort of solidifies your presence um in the way you interact with other people and uh, yeah I definitely think that is quite important not not quite as important as you know getting you work out there in any yeah. way but definitely I think that does help and I think in some way it also makes me feel more professional in myself even yeah. though it's just it's the same work um same articles same videos I've edited whatever it's the same anyway but just putting like putting a logo to it or having a select color theme across my website there's something about that that makes me think okay this is a brand I am professional this is me and I think on a personal level it's really great even if it doesn't aid on a professional level um, one thing I'm curious to know for me personally is I use Twitter a lot to showcase my work but you said you were um, someone found your work on Instagram how do you use Instagram to showcase your work? Because for me personally, Instagram is like a personal place. Yeah, to be honest, most of the time I don't use Instagram. Yeah. Um, but it was, I think the one that I shared on my Instagram was like the first time I'd been featured in, um, I think it might have been Wayso Midlands or something like that. Um so it was sort of a, oh, this is so weird seeing my name here for the first time or whatever. But then if I make like a, a graphic or a video I'm proud of, I'll share that on my story as well. And, you know, I'll, I'll tag the account I've made something for or written for. So it's not my, my main way of sharing things, but I do sort of use it to sometimes as a platform to direct traffic to my Twitter account. So I mostly use Twitter. Um, so for me personally, I want to go, I want to work for a club and be a media officer like you. Um, for those of the people who may not know what the job entitles, what exactly do you do? Okay, so um, for the first season I was with the team, it was just me doing everything really. So I was doing the live tweeting uh, as well as the photography I wrote the match previews the match reports did the player interviews posted the graphics on social media um, tried to get the fan interaction uh, contacted the local radio stations and um, the I think at that point I was writing for the local for Lincoln Echo as well that might have been the following season I'm not sure so um, yeah it was basically everything on the media front I was doing myself and then for the second season we did a rebrand to Lincoln City Women and I thought you know what this needs to be more professional now so um, I brought in a couple of media assistants to mainly do the live tweeting and just like the handle match day stuff which gave me time to work on other things so I still do the photography um, I still write the match reports actually someone else does the previews um, I do most of the midweek social media things, including making the graphics and the videos. And then because I now work for Radio Lincolnshire, it is a bit easier on that front that we yeah. have like a weekly slot and I arrange which player is going to be on, etc. So it's definitely very full on. Yeah. Um, but it is something that like when I got in the habit 
it just became second nature. So I've got a timeline of on a Monday, I do this on a Tuesday, I do this to make sure all my posts are up at the right time. So it is very full on, but it's, yeah, I've got, it's, it's worth it. And it is, it is manageable. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of work and it sounds like you love what you do. How important, Absolutely. how important is that to, especially in this industry to love your job? I think it's so important because, you know, everyone has bad days at work, but when your bad day at work is on a day when you've traveled for three hours and then you've just lost one nil in an injury time goal or something, there are a few feelings more crushing than things (laughs) like that. So I think you have to really love what you're doing to make sure you love it at every match. Um, And because you know sitting out in the cold sometimes like we've got we've had we had a game that was like minus one and chucking it down with rain and I was sat there with my camera and my fingerless gloves trying to read trying to try to tweet and things and I was just utterly miserable and then actually you think no I'm, I'm watching live football I'm watching the team I support I'm surrounded by people who enjoy their job too and it's quite easy when you do love your job to sort of get out of that rut and I think if you you don't absolutely love it, things like that, it's it's tricky to sort of get your head around sticking at it. I'm curious to know, because obviously you said you didn't know you wanted to go into sports journalism. Have you always had an interest in sports? So like, is, do you support, like, are you, do you support a football team or? Yeah, so I was raised to support um, Man United. So when I was young, I was a Man United fan. Um, and then I sort of, while I was a teenager, I kind of dropped out of football a little bit. I didn't follow it too closely. And then um, when Lincoln City like became a bigger name and I was seeing about them more on social media and then there was, they were on BBC when they had the FA Cup run, I kind of remembered that I loved football. <laughs> and uh, I started going to their games, especially because we got tickets for like four pounds through uni. So, um, yeah, I, I re fell in love with football more recently. And then, yeah, just uh, there's this opportunity in football, I might as well. And then that sort of sparked my love even more. And then, yeah, so it's sort of when I was, say, 17, I didn't really have much interest in football. And then now it's, I think about it at least eight times a day. So, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I feel like it's hard to fall out of love with football you might yeah, lose yeah. interest and then as soon as you watch it again you're like ah oh, now I know why I fell in love with it in the first place you remember how addictive it is and yeah. you know how how it can be an emotional roller coaster it, and definitely. then you watch a bad game and then all of a sudden you hate football again but next week <laughs> yeah. you're watching it again. I know I'm a Cardiff City fan so I know the pain of <laughs> roller coaster emotions absolute roller coaster there yeah yeah um so Whilst I was doing a bit of research, I noticed you um, did two weeks work experience with Sky Sports News. How important is work experience? Because it's drilled into us that work experience is key. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think it was doing the the volunteer work as the media officer um, sort of became my work experience. So for my work experience forms um, in order to graduate for that module, I was like, well, I've been doing this for two years now. I've definitely put in more than 15 days or whatever it is that they um, required for us to graduate. But it was just getting that one work experience that spiraled into more. So having worked for Lincoln City Women, I met someone at Radio Lincolnshire. I got a job at Radio Lincolnshire. And then with that on my CV, when I applied for the Sky Sports um, work experience scheme, I think because they saw BBC on my CV, they thought, oh, okay, you know, she's got a foot in the door. She's taking it seriously. And then because I'd got Sky Sports on my CV, it I, I, I started freelancing for um, a different local publication. And I think, yeah, just getting that one work experience is what spiraled into the fact that I've, I've now graduated and can afford to live um, and have a job. So that was definitely this? massive for me. Yeah, do you enjoy the freelance work in? Yeah, I think that kind of works for me. Um, I think if I had a a nine to five job, I'd get a bit bored maybe. Yeah. Whereas if I can be, you know, I'll I'll fill in for someone on the afternoon show on Monday and then on Tuesday I'm 
you know driving the show for a uh, sports commentary and then on Wednesday I'm just like answering the phones for someone I, I kind of like the variety of that and I like that it's not just you get up you go to work and then you get home in the evening it's I think um sure there's not as much job stability and um so that that is a little bit like some weeks I'll only have eight hours worth of pay but then some weeks I've got 36 hours worth of pay so I think it's definitely a, a gamble you have to take but I think it is more interesting than if you just had a nine to five or well it's not really a nine to five when you work in a sport because you got to work Saturdays but <laughs> you know what I mean yeah so would you say if someone was going into the freelancing and you as you say like one week you have only eight hours work would the main thing to be is to just keep at it yeah because it all balances out and um you can freelance from more than one place at a time as well obviously so um I think it is it, we uh I remember having a lecture on someone who was talking about freelancing and they actually taught us all about how to um pitch articles and things but she made it seem like oh this is a big risk you need to know what you're doing but in actual fact it's just once you get into the habit of it and you've got a regular employer that you freelance for it's not scary at all and I think um when we had a lecture about freelancing it to me it felt scary but I, I really enjoy it and just to finish off congratulations on the publication of your book um do you want to just tell us a little bit about it and when it comes uh, out yes yeah. so, well actually I've got my my proof copy um arrived so <laughs> my release date is the 15th of this month um that's when it's actually available for order <laughs> haven't actually announced that yet um <laughs> but I will be announcing it later um and uh, it's I basically because the uh, the women's national league was uh called null and void last season and I I've worked in the league I've seen the people I've seen how much they care and it just felt wrong to have that ignored um and the records were lost and so you know men's football is always like really well documented and people can look back and say oh yeah on this day in 1970 this happened but women's football is not recorded the same so I thought well it's called null and void but in 10-15 years time there's not going to be a record of it and it's going to be hard to find, especially because on like the uh, full-time website, all the tables read zero. So I thought there needs to be a record of all this information. So I contacted the league and they sent me the league tables and the standings before it was all wiped. I contacted clubs, players, um, some fans and just said, what are your thoughts? Talk me through your season. So um I, yeah I basically half of the book is just talking to people explaining what happened talking through the season and then the other half is tables explaining how things would have ended if it, they decided on points per game instead of null and void things like that so just um yeah like a, a, just so it's there so there is a record of it and people can read what the results were and I think that's uh, quite important. So I'm, I'm excited to have written that. Even I'm not expecting it to sell really well because I know it's very niche, but the fact that it's there and if someone Same. wants to do a research in however many years time, I have recorded that information and it is available. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for that to um, actually go up for release. Well, it's amazing. Next. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Big achievement. Um, so that's all um for our viewers if they want to check out your work um where on social media can they find you yeah so i'm mostly on twitter so that's um at miss b pritchard uh, and then my website is just bethpritchard.co.uk and yeah all my work's there fab thank you so much for joining us today and thank good you. luck with your book and for lincoln city as well <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> I don't want no disrespect Cop, no protects on a check